Thank you for joining us on this Friday the 13th. Uh, my name is Ana Lucia Cordova. I'm the Director of Strategic Initiatives at the Office of Research. And uh, this is our first team research forum for fall 2023. So some of you have been attending our research forums since way back in 2020 when we started them as part of our campus response to COVID and the campus shutdown. And over the last few years, this has kind of morphed and evolved into a campus-wide virtual forum where we try to pick topics that are of relevance to our campus community at large, including staff and students. So this year, we decided to start with taking a quick overview about how to find research, how to find funding for your research. And there are many groups on campus who provide support to our researchers uh, in this area, but for today, sorry, my light went out. Um, today, we are going to be uh, focusing on three groups on campus. We have uh, Meg Sparling, who is the research funding manager at the Office of Research. We have Tracy Galbao, who is the managing executive director at Foundation Engagement, and Jamie Shattuck, the managing executive director for corporate engagement. So, um, Today, we're gonna hear a little bit from them about the resources their teams offer. Please don't worry about taking notes. We are going to share the recording and any materials presented by the speakers. And with that, I'm gonna let Meg start. I'm gonna to go to the background and figure out why my light went out. <laughs> Thank you, Ana Lucia. I'm going to try to share my screen here. So is that working? Are you seeing? presenter view or your view. Okay, good. <laughs> and then of course I'm not on the right side. So let's go back. Meg, it's in presenter view. It is? Okay. Yes. Uh, do, 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 do. What did I do that before? Display settings. So I went to, okay, share. And then let's just go to the actual app. And this, and then are you seeing presenter view still? No, we're good. Okay. okay, great. All right, there's my title slide. Okay, uh, so my name is Meg Sparling. As Ana Lucia said, um, I'm actually on Ana Lucia's team, the Interdisciplinary Research and Strategic Initiatives team, which is within the Office of Research at UC Davis. Hello. Uh, so I'm going first uh, with this presentation and my presentation really focuses on federal, state and internal funding opportunities. And then I'll turn it over to my very beloved um, colleagues in uh, the Office of Foundation and Corporate Engagement and they'll talk about um, private foundation and corporate um, sources of funding. So, Let's get started. Um, a word before I begin, there are a lot of hyperlinks in th these slides and I am going to share them with you all, don't worry. Um, I will say that um, a lot of these hyperlinks are very important and so you may want to bookmark them. I'll remind you at various times <laughs> during the presentation, um, but don't worry, you will receive the slides with the hyperlinks. So I, wear two hats for the university. Uh, one is I manage the limited submissions process. And um, if you don't know what that is, um, I actually have a slide about it later on and I'll cover that. And then my other hat is that um, in the rest of my time, because limited submissions is a lot of work, um, in the rest of my time, I um, run a few things um, which are called the Funding Opportunities Program. And primarily that is sending out weekly uh, newsletters with funding opportunities. Most people are probably familiar with my name because of those newsletters, if they're subscribed to them. Uh, and then I also uh, try to manage our pivot subscription. And we'll talk about that also in a little bit. Um, I have a list. So I have four newsletters. One is kind of a general newsletter. And then I have specific ones for social, the social sciences, um, early career researchers on campus, and then the humanities. Um, I, that last bullet is to 
provide the very important caveat that um, my work is really targeted towards faculty and staff researchers. Uh, if you are a grad student, undergraduate student, um, feel free to ask questions at the end um, and we can give you a little bit more information, but a lot of the information we're about to um, provide is really targeted towards faculty and, and staff researchers. So <clears throat> the first thing I would suggest in um, improving your uh, funding search is to sign up for my newsletters. Uh, and then I, so these are hyperlinked that, and when you click on them, they will actually, um, if you're logged into Kerberos, they will actually like automatically subscribe you. Um, and then let's see, let me get rid of this thing. So I do provide a note here that, um, you know, I can't put everything in the newsletters because nobody would read them. Uh, so I really try to keep them uh, narrowed down to things that, you know, multiple people or teams across campus would be interested in. And then um, if you are looking for more specific targeted funding opportunities, then that is where we um, suggest that you use Pivot. Uh, so Pivot is, I believe, the largest and best uh, funding opportunity database for academic funding. Um, it has research funding, but it also has um, postdoc opportunities, training grants, uh, lots of different things. Um, and anyone with a UC Davis email address or Kerberos can use it. Uh, it's not just for faculty, it's for everybody. There are undergraduate opportunities in there. There are graduate student opportunities in there. It's very robust. And you can use your Kerberos to log in. I've created a short video tutorial, um, which is linked to here, for just quickly getting started because if it's one of those things that you log into it and you're like, now what? <laughs> um, and there's this big search bar in, um, on the homepage and you type things into it and you get weird results. So I kind of um, walk you through how to get the results that you want um, with that video. Uh, and that's basically through the advanced search, using the advanced search tool. Uh, with Pivot, you can set up saved searches for yourself, for your lab, for your team and then have those um, emailed to you once a week. Uh, you can share searches with others. We are in the process of creating more targeted newsletters within Pivot. Um, and if you look under the groups feature in Pivot, you will find a few. We've got um, COVID and I've got a postdoc awards one now, and um, we're gonna be adding to those all the time. And if your department, et cetera, is interested in creating a newsletter for itself, please contact me. I'd be happy to help you. And then we've also set it set up some um, curated searches and lists of opportunities in there that um, can help you get, get you started and brainstorming and stuff like that, or give you a place to start. In addition to Pivot, there's also, um, you know, when you're talking about federal funding uh, specifically, there's grants.gov, which is uh, where all federal agencies are required to post their funding opportunities. Uh, they have a very robust and relatively easy to use search tool uh, where you can also um, create a saved search so that you receive emails from the system whenever a um, funding opportunity is posted to the site for like a specific um, federal agency or like keywords, et cetera. So if you're looking for uh, mul like an email that contains multiple different federal agencies, um, you can you can set it up that way. I do have a caveat here, which is that they require you to update your password. Like it feels like once a month. It, it's crazy. 
Um, so it's a little annoying, but sometimes it's it's the best way for people to get what they're um, interested in. So I'm putting that here. Um, oh, and then here is kind of a screenshot of what it looks like. So you can see down at the bottom here, this is where you can um, select specific federal agencies. Um, this is the tab that um, we're looking at here. And then here's the save search option where you can, um, you know, you can set up your search terms over here on the left. And then once you have it the way you want it, you can hit save search and it'll send you emails. Uh, with grants.gov, I believe they're like every day or, yeah. So with Pivot, it's once a week and everything is kind of collected into a digest for you. But with grants.gov, depending on the size of your search, you might be getting like daily emails. So that's something to keep in mind. So with NSF, if you're um, primarily, if your research is primarily funded by NSF, there's a few things that I highly, highly suggest that you do. Um, one is to subscribe to your directorate and or division. Um, I have a handy link here for how to do that. Um, I would also highly suggest that you occasionally attend their office hours. Um, they are really generous with giving their time um, in places like that. But the most important thing is to actually discuss your projects with your program officers. Um, they, you know, I go to conferences and there are program officers there and they always tell us, um, we really wish that faculty would contact us more often. We feel really bad when they spend a lot of time on proposals that just really aren't a fit. Um, and if they would have just contacted us like with an email or a phone call, we would have been able to tell them, you know, actually it's this program over here that you should apply to, saving you like up to a year <laughs> um, in review time. Uh, so you can save yourself a lot of time and really increase your chances of success if you have a brief conversation with your program officers about which opportunities to apply to, what are the most important things to keep in mind when you're envisioning the project for this specific opportunity, et cetera. So the next slide, this is um, a screenshot of the NSF funding search page. You can see that you can um, dial down to specific directorates and divisions, um, award types, et cetera. Um, here I'm pointing out to where you can actually search funded awards. So if you're trying to figure out, you know, what have specific programs funded in the past, you can look there. Uh, and then this um, is showing you where to sign up for um, NSF emails. Oh, and then here's a screenshot of um, the email subscribe page, and you can just see here, like, oh, I can I can select um, specific directorates, etc. And then there's also like events and stuff like that. All right, for NIH, um, there they have a table of contents, um, which is a one email every week that goes out that has all the new opportunities for that week. If you want to see all of them, but if you want to receive more targeted emails for just like specific institutes or for keywords, et cetera, then you can also use their search tool, which I have a screenshot of, um, to say, set up a saved search for them as well. Uh, and then here I also have the um, real recommendation to talk to program officers. Um, here's what the NIH search tool looks like. It's under this funding tab. Here you can see that you can select specific institutes, for example, or and they also have like the FDA, um, the CDC, um, they're those kind of relevant or um, connected federal agencies. Um, here's where you um, subscribe, sorry, it's Friday. Um, here you can see that you can save your search here as well. All right, so those are the two ones that we get the most funding from. So I have specific slides for them. 
when it comes to all the other funding agencies, it's kind of similar, sometimes a little different for each one. So for here, I have links to like the search tool for the NEH and then the link to signing up for email alerts. Same for um, the NEA, the USDA, Department of Energy. <laughs> Department of Energy is um, one of my problem uh, children. <laughs> um, they All of their divisions like to do things different ways and they don't have like one search platform for the entire Department of Energy, which is really annoying. Um, you can, and sometimes it's easiest to just use grants.gov to keep track of um, funding opportunities across DOE um, or Pivot. But um, if you need help navigating that, feel free to contact me. It's, it's not just you. <laughs> um, and the same goes for the Department of Defense. Um, things are can really vary across their different sections. So um, do some searching and then if you get stuck, let me know. And then um, again, do talk to the program officers and actually, and I'll just note with DOE and DOD, this is sometimes even more important um, because they have more of a culture of um, funding the people that they know. Um, and I'll just leave it at that. Uh, so for state funding and UC system wide funding. So for state funding, actually something really fantastic has happened in the last few years, which is that the state of California, um, the, the, the state library created one grants portal for all of the uh, state funding opportunities before they were just all over the place. And now they're all collected into this one portal where you can search really easily. You can sign up for email updates. It's fantastic. Um, so I have links to that here. Uh, then the UC Research Grants Program Office is um, you know, part of the centralized you know, Office of the President. They have um, regular funding programs, like their special initiatives. Um, they have like cancer and tobacco research programs, et cetera. But they also periodically um, have multi-campus award opportunities, um, grant opportunities. They have programs that support national lab collaborations. Uh, there's like a few president's awards. So make sure you familiarize yourself with what they have to offer. And if it's um, of help to you, there's also a UC Humanities Research Institute, so a, U a UC system-wide um, Humanities Research Institute, and they actually have um, quite a bit of funding opportunities, and a lot of them uh, encourage collaborations um, across multiple campuses, etc., um, and they can be really cool and dynamic, so if you're in the humanities or the humanistic social sciences, uh, please check those out. And even if you're um, not in the humanities and humanistic social sciences, but you want to collaborate with people who are, um, that's a good opportunity to do so. So internal funding, in my uh, ideal world, every single internal funding opportunity on campus would be uh, posted on the InfoReady Review platform, making it super easy to find them all but that has not yet been fully realized. Um, however, we do have more and more every year that are run through that platform. So it is becoming like a good place to start. And then um, if you know of internal funding opportunities on campus that need a platform that's very easy to use to run their competition, please send them my way, um, thus achieving my goal of having them all in one place. Um, in addition to that, there are many research institutes on campus who have like pilot project funding opportunities, et cetera. So please familiarize yourself with the research institutes, initiatives, et cetera, um, that are related to your research and 
talk to the directors, find out um, what their offerings are, etc. Uh, the Office of Research itself has a few funding opportunities. So um, Ana Lucia is actually the point person for this first one, and she might be able to answer some questions in the Q&A about it. But basically, the Interdisciplinary Research Catalyst Awards are for um, faculty who are who want to apply to really big funding opportunities like a NSF Science and Technology Center, for example, but they need some initial startup funding to like gather their team together and talk about what they're gonna do. Um, so it's kind of like, a, it's a catalyst award. It's trying to get um, a team ready to apply successfully to a really big grant. Uh, and then Venture Catalyst offers their uh, Science Translational Innovative Research or STAIR grants every year. Uh, we also have a publication assistance fund that not a lot of people know about. In addition to the PI Bridge program, and um, we also have a matching funds request process. So those are hyperlinked so you can learn more about those there. Um, Hopefully you're aware, but maybe not, that the Academic Senate has uh, some internal funding awards. Um, and there's a link to that there. And then Global Affairs also has some of their own funding opportunities. And then they can also um, really connect you with international base or you know international funding opportunities. So something like the Fulbright, for example, et cetera. So please contact them if, if you're interested in stuff like that. So just the next two slides, I have some tips. I'm gonna to try to go through them really fast so that I'm not taking up all of our time. Um, but you know, as I was creating these slides, I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, the main thing I'm telling people is to sign up for emails <laughs> um, and everyone's email inboxes are completely out of control as I know. Uh, so one of the things you might consider doing is creating a folder or a couple folders and then creating filters or rules so that um, those emails are put into one specific place. And then you might, for example, put a reminder in your calendar for like, I don't know, Thursday afternoon when you're not typically busy and you can just kind of check the folder and make sure that nothing really important has been published this week that you might want to get right on, et cetera. Um, you can also <laughs> farm out some of this work to your postdocs, to your students. Um, I highly recommend that you bookmark things in your browser. Uh, generally speaking, the more um, successfully funded researchers pursue mul multiple types of funding. So federal, state, foundation, corporate, internal, et cetera. So try to think about multiple divisions or streams of funding for your research. Build relationships with your program officers, um, as I've stated. And then also, you know, ask your mentors which opportunities you should be applying to and when um, in your career stage, et cetera. Pay attention to which awards and grant programs are funding the other scholars in your field. Uh, don't forget about your professional society or societies that you might be a member of. They often will offer uh, funding opportunities, pilot awards, conference grants, et cetera. So um, check that out. And then one thing that we um, really recommend people do if they, if they can find the time to sit down and actually think it through is kind of create a five-year plan for what what you want to apply to and, and when. Um, and then if you really want to hold yourself accountable to that, try to like enter it into your calendar, et cetera. Um, make things easier for future you. So um, what if it's limited? <laughs> so um, as I mentioned, I run the um, limited submissions uh, process for campus. And that is um, if you come across a fall a, a research funding call that limits the number of proposals that an institution can submit, 
that is a limited submission. So in those cases, we run a internal competition first, and then the person who is selected uh, for that by that um, competition then moves forward with a proposal to the sponsor. You can search for active limited submission competitions on InfraReady Review. They're all run through that platform. Uh, I also announce the limited submissions in my weekly newsletters, so you can keep an eye out for those there. A lot of them are annual, so if there's someone, if there's something that you want to apply to, you may want to put a reminder in your calendar uh, to remind you for the next year, for example. I also have a lot of information about recurring important limited submission competitions on the website, um, this limited submission FAQs link that I have here, there's a lot, there's a list of all the important ones and like when the deadlines usually are, who our um, most recent awardees are on campus, etc. So feel free to check those out. Um, most of the competitions have minimal internal requirements because um, we don't want, we don't want you to spend a lot of time on the internal competition. We want um, to figure out who the most competitive person is with as little information as possible and then um, allow them to move forward. So this is, I think this is my second to last slide. Um, if you find an opportunity to apply to and you need assistance, here are some next steps. Uh, the um, Interdisciplinary Research and Strategic Initiatives team has this research development toolbox that contains templates, checklists, boilerplate language for most of the federal agencies, if not all. Um, some grant writing, some really great grant writing resources, um, early career resources for getting started with grant writing, et cetera really some invaluable stuff in that folder. So um, it's a box folder. So please check that out. I have a link here for sponsored programs um, who will help you submit your proposal to the sponsor and they have trainings on you know building a budget and stuff like that. Um, and then here's a link to our team and um, just a quick explanation of what we do. We do anything from helping people find collaborators and build research teams, answering convoluted proposal development questions, um, general guidance. Um, the, uh, the team mostly works on large grants, but we do have some bandwidth for looking at um, small to medium proposals. Uh, so if you need help, feel free to contact um, IRS at ucdavis.edu and they will um, answer questions, let you know what they can do for you, et cetera. And then um, my colleagues coming up next, um, if it's a foundation or a corporate sponsor specifically, then please contact the Office of Foundation and Corporate Engagement for support. They can offer you a lot of help. So, oh yeah, and there's my contact information. So um, I'm going to stop and let them take it from here. All right, thanks so much, Meg. Can you see my screen okay? Yes. Fabulous. Thank you so much. So as Ana Lucia mentioned, I am Jamie Shattuck. I lead our corporate engagement team. Um, so I'm going to briefly introduce our team to start, and then Tracy and I are going to tag team this. So we will kind of alternate slides throughout this deck. Um, and you will see very quickly that I am biased towards relationships with companies, and Tracy is biased towards foundations. Uh, please know we're happy to help support and help make connections across our team um, to whoever is the relevant contact for you. Uh, so Foundation and Corporate Engagement was launched as a, as a central unit about four years ago. Um, and we are a service unit to the campus to help focus on relationship building and bringing in support from these external organizations. 
Our teams came together from two different branches across campus. Uh, we reside under development and alumni relations here on campus, but we really are agnostic to supporting the entire campus as it relates to foundation and corporate investments, uh, opportunities for partnerships, and really trying to identify where and how we can help support these relationships externally. Um, in addition to being a campus-wide unit, we also across the team have a liaison-based model. And the goal here is for each member of our team to have some critical understanding and expertise with each of our schools and units and have kind of a primary point of contact uh, in order to help best understand where there's leadership, priorities, how we can engage with faculty members in a productive way, um, and help kind of build those successful internal relationships that are so critical to supporting foundation and corporate endeavors. Thank you, Jamie, and thank you, Meg, for uh, the previous presentation, and thanks for letting us come and chat today. Um, as Jamie alluded to, we do have liaison areas. This is a general schematic of our internal members of our foundation and corporate engagement team, and then we actually have several in units that have dotted lines to our foundation and corporate engagement team. Both of those dotted line relationships in the units happen to be both on the health campus as well as the academic campus. Each one of these team members that you see have an assigned portfolio um, of centralized corporate and foundation prospects. We serve as the campus-wide relationship managers and each engagement officer on behalf of the company foundation and the campus, we identify, facilitate, and we manage multiple unit engagements. And these are multi, these can be in multiple different areas. It can be in a sponsored research project or a philanthropic research grant. It can be philanthropic support. It can be pipeline building for student talent, things like that. Um, we also try as a central team and with our dotted liaisons, um, we also facilitate um, knowledge sharing about engagement across the campus, depending on where it falls. And we do serve as the point of contact for um, our companies and our foundations. And this, again, as I said, includes a lot of professional education, potential space, equipment donations, recruitment, um, as I said, sponsor research. Um, so all of those things are sort of within our purview. And as you can see, if you are in a school or unit that actually has um, someone who is in that, like ag and environmental sciences or engineering, they usually are your first point of contact. But if you happen to be in a unit that doesn't, you can certainly reach out to Jamie or I, and we can connect you to the right person. So how do we operate? We've mentioned relationship managers a couple of times now. And what we really see ourselves is to help support and serve as a facilitator in order to make these relationships a little bit easier on our faculty members, our staff, our postdocs. Um, our goal is to understand a company or a foundation, their priorities, what they want to fund, why they want to fund it, um, what the background has looked like, how have we been successful in these programs in the past, what faculty members might have previous relationships. All of those are important parts as we continue to look for investment opportunity from both foundations and corporations. Um, we cross the campus boundaries, as we mentioned. Uh, our goal is really to help make additional connections um, without necessarily uh, making a push too hard one way or another. So uh, we want to make sure that this has potential alignment with ROI, what is the return on the investment back to the company, um, but also why it makes sense for UC Davis and for your work uh, to look at these additional opportunities for engagement. Um, so often these really are relationships where there's a lot of mutual sharing of information, uh, providing data or information that will help advance the field. Uh, so being thoughtful about what is the benefit back to the organization, I think is an important component of building successful relationships. And so each member of our team is really trained on how do we 
help advance and move forward these conversations in a way that will allow you, hopefully, to receive support, um, move forward with a postdoc working on a particular project, for example, and ultimately, how will that bring value to both sides? So serving as a comprehensive facilitator, managing that strategy is really a key point of how we operate. So based on how we operate across you know, the campuses, both the academic and the health campus, we have several goals for our team. Um, and Jamie alluded to a, a little bit in the fact that we are, we are really trying to build holistic relationships. So what we do is we provide services that connect both industries and foundations to our campus resources, as well as our campus expertise, our leaders in the area. We work to support very long-term holistic relationships instead of very transactional relationships with both our foundations and corporations. And we really try to foster meaningful engagement. Um, and it, it has to be a back and forth. So when we talk about return on investment, we're not only talking about a return on investment for our prospects, our foundations, or our corporations. We're also talking about our university benefit. There should be some sort of university benefit, whether it's you know, um, supporting educational projects, research projects, or even some of our service missions. And some of this includes, um, as you know, universities can be big and complex, especially from an outside organization. So one thing that we really try to do, especially with our foundations and corporations, is make sure that they're navigating the university maze and we're connecting them so they're not doing a lot of Googling and trying to figure out the right person to talk to. We want to make sure that we're being donor centric and and talking to them about their needs. Again, we provide connections to university resources, talent, expertise, anything like that. And one big thing that we're always looking for is identifying strategic collaborations and engagement across the different areas. Um, and that includes research, that includes philanthropy and other partnerships that you might see around the campus. But we wanna make sure that it is a win-win situation for both of our external partners and our external foundations and corporations, but also our internal researchers or programs or projects. Next slide. Okay, so that was a lot of really high level overview of the work that we do. What does that actually mean in terms of tangible benefits that our team members can provide? Um, and I'm going to be really clear up front. Our team does not execute any agreements on behalf of the campus, but we know all of the people who do. So we want to help make those connections, get things to the right office, and help move things forward in a more quick fashion um, if possible. So diving into some of the specific services, uh, we work to develop relationships with our program managers, our corporate champions, so we can understand what their specific interests are and how we can make the best pitch to them in terms of where there could be potential alignment with campus research interests, priorities um, so that we can hopefully streamline some of those conversations. Uh, understanding the goals and prior priorities of the organizational funders. So that goes back to through these relationships, we want to make sure that we really are putting the best possible proposal in front of them so that you can have a targeted conversation about where investment is possible for your projects. Um, so understanding how they fund, what their cycles are, um, how they like to receive information. Do they like to start with a high level or overview or do they have an annual RFP process that we have to follow? Um, those are all pieces of the organizational uh, funders priorities that we work to understand. We conduct prospect research and organizational profiles. Have we received funding from this organization? If so, how did it come in? Uh, was that a long-term effort? Was that something that followed an annual process? Um, so doing that background and due diligence on a specific company or foundation can allude to how we might be successful in future opportunities. Uh, we work to build strategy and coordinate uh, across relevant units on the campus. Many of the relationships that we help to manage have multiple touch points across UC Davis, as you could expect. Um, so how do we make sure that we're not 
uh, competing with ourselves for funding from a particular organization? How do we time things in a way that we know aligns with their budget cycles? We can assist with proposal writing and editing review um, to make sure that uh, we're providing kind of best best case perspectives in terms of how you might want to pitch uh, the particular project that you're sharing with an external funder. Uh, we can actually assist with the submission process through their online portals. And then oftentimes when we receive funding, we're responsible for continuing to steward the relationship with that funder, as well as making sure that grant reporting um, happens in a timely manner, because we want to continue receiving funding from that particular organization. Meg alluded to the limited uh, submission process. Uh, that is actually the case with many of our foundations where we have to run a limited submission process. And Tracy's going to talk through that a little bit more. Um, so we provide perspective in terms of what that external funder is looking for to uh, help in the selection and identification of the best possible candidate from UC Davis. And then we facilitate campus visits uh, with both foundation and industry representatives. So this could be a company that wants to visit. They have this particular day available. They have these identified interests uh, and will coordinate some faculty interactions, um, have a chance for you to talk through some of your research areas and see if there might be alignment with some of their current projects or programs. So thank you, Jamie. That um, that gave you a little bit of an overview of sort of what kind of services we can offer, uh, not only to our external stakeholders, but all our, our internal stakeholders. But I, I love this, this chart because it breaks down depending on where you're at in your career. Like Meg, Meg did mention that if there were graduate students or, or undergrad students on here to reach out separately. But we do, um, in on the foundation space and even in the corporate space, we work with um, not only postdoc researchers, but early career faculty all the way through sort of professors. So this little schematic basically shows you some of the ways that we can support faculty. So early career faculty and postdocs, a lot of times, as Meg had said, they are looking, you guys are looking for preliminary or pilot data. And a lot of foundations are C, are providing C funding for that kind of thing. Then mid-career, there are, there are calls for transition funding. There are calls for bridge funding, sabbatical or publishing grants. Those can be very targeted RFPs and we help support that. And then when it comes to sort of more seasoned researchers, uh, there are opportunities out there for transformational grants. Some of these big ideas, some of these center grants, and we can help with some of those. In addition to writing the applications, we can help with um, help, not sign, but help with some of the sponsored research agreements, um, MTAs, other things like that. So across the gamut, we work with all types of researchers on looking for uh, funding, not only for programs, but also projects. And next slide. And we could not do that <laughs> without our partners in this process. And I hope that if you take anything away is that we work, we all work very closely together. Our team works very closely with many teams on the Office of Research. So we not only work with um, business office and grants analysts who support the budget process and put things into Cayuse for our sponsor programs approval. We also work with Office of Research on limited submission competitions. We do work with our, our IRS team on editorial and budget support. We work closely with our individual development officers across schools and units and a lot of faculty across campuses. And then we do work with not only our gift agreements team if it comes in as a gift or our cashier's office if it comes in as a, a grant or a contractual thing. So, so we, we have a lot of partners and we really couldn't do any of the work that we do without a lot of the uh, research units that um, are under the Office of Research. All right, so we're going to shift gears just a little bit and dive in. I'm going to start on the corporate engagement side to look at 
what corporate relationship building uh, really is because it's it's very cyclical. Um, there are often a lot of these pieces that are happening in parallel because we have a lot of different groups across the campus who might be having conversations with the same company. Um, so if, if we look at this in terms of kind of building awareness of offerings and starting on the left-hand side, uh, there is tons of ways to find out information about UC Davis, probably too many. Um, so how do we work to share information on specific research interests that might align with the corporate partner? Uh, we do that through a variety of one-pagers and website pieces and sharing of articles and press releases um, on some of your published work uh, to try and build awareness of what's happening across UC Davis with uh, potential or current corporate partners. Uh, from there, we work to generate leads. What companies actually are interested in uh, supporting these types of collaborative partnerships? Um, obviously, not, not every company wants to have academic relationships. So which ones are they? Um, how do they tend to fund? Um, and then working to really build that relationship. Those relationships with our corporate champions are so critical to that, um, but also sharing some of the great work that you are doing and understanding where there's areas of synergy or, or mutual interest. So going from there to identifying uh, those, those needs, who are those um, conversations that we want to help facilitate and happen, uh, from there working to develop a partnership, what what might be that scope of work for a project that could have synergy and could be funded by a potential corporate partner? And then what's the right pathway to uh, formalize that agreement, whether it's philanthropy or a grant or a contract um, to help you proceed forward with uh, whatever that identified project or program support is. Um, and then continuing to steward that relationship. How can we assess? How can we improve? How can we continue to be a, a good partner across our organization for companies um, in terms of what their interests and their expectations are? So don't think that we're doing this alone. We're actually... Um, part of a network of academic corporate relations officers here across the U.S. So sharing best practices of uh, how we've been successful in this, but also screening um, an industry's perspective. So this is a survey that was conducted by the Network of Academic Corporate Relations Officers, both in 2019 and 2020, and shows an example of some of the data that we collected from industry in terms of why they are interested in partnering with companies. And what you'll see is there's a, a range of different items from access to our students and our graduates for employment, um, but also for companies to share their brands, get UC Davis students trained on their equipment that they might want to then purchase when they go out into industry, uh, supporting relevant research. Often this might be pre-competitive or in the early stage of development, um, helping to fund applied research but also things like encouraging their staff development. So continuing in professional education opportunity seminars um, and ultimately driving commercialization. So the technology transfer component is critical here as well. And I want to state that this is also going to be very industry sector dependent. So companies in biopharma might be very different in terms of what they want to uh, interact with a university campus than a software or an engineering company. Um, so just knowing that there's a lot of different ways that a company can touch and engage with UC Davis faculty, students, and staff. And we highlight that in uh, a little bit more detail here specific to UC Davis. So these are all examples of how a company could interact with our campus. They could be from a volunteer role where industry serves uh, on our advisory councils to provide best practices and guidance to centers or institutes or departments. It could be through offering internships and co-ops to our students or having continuing education opportunities for their employees. Um, but it could also be through helping to support scholarships for our students. 
donating equipment through gift and kind opportunities. Um, our goal in foundation and corporate engagement uh, is to help support all of these activities, but ultimately we're working to drive investment into the campus. So understanding where there's the potential for philanthropic contributions, research collaborations, um, things that will help support your funding initiatives in a positive and meaningful way. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about foundations, uh, pr specifically private foundations and public charities. Um, as with certain, you know, uh, government and state funding agencies, uh, these private professional foundations are organizations that have missions and programs. Um, they have goals and what they're working to do is, you know, support research and projects that actually align with those missions and goals. One thing that foundations do not do and that is a it's a we'll go through some myths, but one thing that foundations really try not to do is duplicate federal funding, they want to complement or supplement where the gaps are. And so a lot of times that that will end up being sort of undersubscribed areas of research or junior researchers or things like that. Foundations, uh, just like corporations and others are looking on a return on investment, and that is usually measured in sort of impact and its impact to either a patient population or a specific educational program, but they are looking for impact on the ground and a lot of those grant reports will talk about what the impact is in the first year, second year, third year. Um, but the one thing that is really um, something that confuses a lot of people when they go from non from government to non-government is that every single foundation is completely different in terms of their funding interests, their application guidelines. And unlike with NIH and NSF and some of the other uh, funding agencies that Meg talked about, these foundations tend to be pretty lean. And if they're not lean, a lot of times they're really not engaging with the public. So uh, I don't ever recommend, unless you have a personal relationship, reaching out to a program officer at a foundation, which is why having dedication, dedicated foundation professionals is actually very useful because we take the time to study their websites, make sure that we understand the application process, the formatting guidelines, when it needs to be in, how it needs to get in, because not all of them are online portals any, uh, still. So we do a lot of that kind of stuff um, and work very closely with the faculty. Next slide. One thing I wanted to really talk about, because I think there's a little bit of a myth, um, some myths out there when it comes to foundation funding. A lot of people think that the grants are pretty easy to get. And the reality of the situation is they are actually highly competitive. Their pay lines, a lot of these, especially larger foundations with larger budgets, their pay lines are what NIH is looking at. So their pay lines are very similar. The, the good thing about that is there are a lot of foundations out there that you can go to. Um, they fund university units or priorities when, you know, a dean or department head has something in their mind and they want to go to a foundation. We have to make sure that we're being donor centric and that it actually does align with their goals and their mission. Um, a lot of people think they might provide core support, long term funding, endowment, capital projects like buildings. I will tell you foundations have come, most of them have gotten away from funding things like that. So the majority of them fund programs and projects. And a lot of people believe that they make really transformational gifts. And we see that in the news a lot, but I will say that's the exception and not the rule. Our median grants here at UC Davis range from 75,000 to about 150,000. So it's not a lot. Next slide. Um, and I see our time, so I'm going to run through this a little bit quicker. Um, there are considerations for foundation projects, but really what you want to do is make sure that your, your project is aligning with the foundation interest, what your impact is, and what gap your research fills. They typically don't like to fund incremental research, so you really want to be asking some of the bigger questions. Next slide. And the, this last slide that we're going to talk through, um, what we wanted to do was now that you know how 
what now you know what we do and how we can help you, we wanted to provide a snapshot of some of our top foundations and corporations. Foundations on the left, corps on the right. And you, I'm sure, recognize quite a few foundations on this list that we sort of manage. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we work with a lot of internal offices. So I wanted to bring out two examples quickly. Um, and I want to highlight our limited submission process because that is no exception. Um, so the first foundation that I wanted to highlight was the um, WM Keck Foundation. So if anyone on this call has ever applied or been awarded a Keck grant, you know how much work it is from the start to finish as they have, it's really, it's a four step review process from the beginning to the end. And the, the whole process takes about a year um, to apply. And then once we find out funding, it happens pretty quickly. Um, but they're managing that whole process would be very hard for just sort of one person. And so that's why we work closely with limited submission. The other foundation that I work very closely with Meg on is the Hartwell Foundation. And just like Keck, they have a, a pretty onerous process. It's only a two-step review process, but the application is, is, is a bear to write. <laughs> so with both of these, Meg and I actually, we do informational sessions for faculty. We run the internal competition as well as provide editorial assistance on applications. If any of these applications get invited to either interview or site visits, we actually coordinate practice sessions, all of those kind of things from soup to nuts. So even though these foundations are managed by our foundation and corporate engagement team, as I've said a couple of times, I could not do my job effectively without several teams within the Office of Research. And I'm going to let Jamie share a couple of examples from the corporate side. Thanks, Tracy. Um, as mentioned, this is just kind of a handful of the organizations that we help to support. And we know that there are a lot of faculty and grad student relationships that are happening with these companies all the time. That's great. We love the interaction that's happening. Um, but on the corporate side, most of the time there isn't an RFP process. Most of it is based on that relationship that you're building. So we want to be able to be available to offer support and guidance and perspective if you're having those great conversations with a company and you just want to get to the finish line. Um, one of the examples showcased here is Genentech. They have hired a lot of our students, both at the grad student and undergrad level, um, but they've also provided a lot of engagement and touch points across UC Davis as a company that has a Bay Area presence. Uh, most recently, they provided support for Avenue B, which is one of our um, transfer student program pipeline programs around the biological sciences and that support actually came from the Genentech Foundation. They have an interest in health equity. They work with our hospital on clinical trials. So we know there's a lot of touch points happening. If we can help get to the agreement stage and execute on a project or a program that's of interest to you, that's really where we want to help add the value. Um, so please know we, we certainly encourage those conversations happening on the corporate side because we know they're happening all the time. And we just want to um, help get things executed on the back end in a way that would be advantageous to our faculty members, and our staff, and our students. So with that, knowing we're at time, we leave you with our email address. Uh, we would love to hear follow-up in terms of uh, where you think there might be engagement on either a corporate or a foundation um, that would be of interest to you. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Ana Lucia. Thank you everyone for your presentations. We are over time, but I don't have anywhere else to go right now. So I'm happy to like answer some questions. Um, Dan Port has a question. In working with outside groups, has your team ever looked at highlighting the support structures at UCD? For example, I'm in the mass biology program and we offer services to external clients, but don't know if corporate entities you work with are quite aware of what UCD can do to support them. I'm going to let Jamie maybe provide an answer to that one. Happy to. Thanks for your question, Dan. And, and yes, we do our best to share information on service groups across the campus that would be advantageous to companies. Um, and I am very familiar with the, the mouse biology program. So uh, we use slide decks at times to highlight some of the university assets and share that information with our corporate partners. 
uh, especially if their interest is in identifying specific service units that they might be able to take advantage of uh, things that UC Davis already offers and has established rates for external clients. Um, so one of the things that I always tell faculty is if you're interested, just reach out, reach out to Meg or Jamie or Tracy or myself. If we know what you do, it kind of gets indexed into our like permanent Rolodex of things that we are like thinking about. And it gives us something to talk about when we reach out to sponsors. So you can send us, I, I've had faculty send me like a short one pager, just not a CV, but kind of like a, maybe like a third at the top being some biographical information. And then the bottom, what your main research interests are, like a non-technical description of your work. And that really helps us um, when we run into opportunities or when we run into people that we think might be a good, good match. So, so yeah, like take some time to maybe put together that one pager because it will serve you well for a long time and it's easy to, to update. Um, I have a question. So I know that uh, corporate entities sometimes have seed funding calls that go out. Is that like, um, is there a resource that um, FCE maintains where people can search for those or if they're interested in applying for those, who do they contact to learn more about those opportunities? Specific to the corporate side, we actually utilize MIG and the Funding Opportunities website. So uh, when we hear of information of an annual call or maybe a regular uh, application period, we will forward those to MIG so that they can go out in the weekly newsletter. And they will, at that point in time, include who the contact on our team is that works most closely with that organization so that you can directly reach out to that person. Any more questions from our audience? Don't be shy. You can speak up or you can put something in the chat box. Hi. Yes. So I was madly taking notes. Who do we send the one page blurb on what we do and why we do it to? You can send it to all of us. Yes, you can send all it to above. Tracy it. and Jamie. Our team, you can send it to my team, strategic initiatives at ucdavis.edu. Um, and we're, we're happy to have those uh, in, in hand as we run into, into opportunities. If you are a new or newish faculty member, especially if you joined <laughs> UC Davis during COVID, please send me an email. Um, we've started having these like kind of coffee hour or lunch dates with faculty and a couple of people from my team will join and we talk to you about your research and we might be able to point out resources like what we discussed today, but, you know, point you to potential collaborators on campus. So um, feel free to send us an email um, if, if you need assistance with that too. That's another thing that has come up often, you know, because we, we kind of had this like weird couple of years and faculty joining while the campus was shut down. Uh, uh, no joke. Yeah, yeah. And one thing I want to highlight is um, if, if the other way that you can sort of have um, uh, our eyes on your project is to go through the Imperetta site. And if there are limited submission competitions that you are eligible for, please submit your application because not only does Meg provide amazing feedback based on the reviewer comments, whether you're our nominee or not, but also then those projects sort of go into our Rolodex and we look for other opportunities for you as a researcher. So that's another way um, as you're looking for things to go ahead and, and get yourself, you know, at least us know what research funding projects you're looking for. Perfect, thank you. I'm just typing away. We will post a recording and I will share the slides and we might send you a little survey just to get your feedback on what information you you might want to hear next time we do something like this. Um, anyone else? If no one else, I have one more question. Go ahead. The position that one needs to occupy at UC Davis to apply for these. I'm a staff researcher. I am not technically faculty. Can I still apply? 
Uh, uh, think, yeah, go ahead, Meg, if you want to, yeah. So there are, oh, sorry, I'm seeing my camera light flash. Um, if there's a, there's a form uh, that you fill out um, for sponsored programs um, where your department chair or mentor or um, appropriate person would sign and then you would be granted principal investigator status for that project. Um, so there is a process for making you a principal investigator on projects. Um, feel free to contact me or sponsored programs about that. And if you're looking for foundation opportunities, um, there are several times where they say tenure track professor, but a lot of times they'll say tenure like. And when I reach out to foundations, tenure like is, you know, a dedicated lab space, some startup money, maybe some graduate students and postdocs that you're mentoring. Um, and so those are those would be opportunities that you would be eligible for in a non-tenured position. And there's there's quite a few um, because every university is different. And then when you go to the medical school, we have we have the academic track, we have the, you know, we have the clinics track. So um, if you're looking at an RFP for a foundation and you have a question about eligibility, please email me because sometimes there's wiggle room and sometimes we can reach out to the program officer and get an exception if 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 it's warranted. Thank you. When in doubt, always ask. If you don't ask, the answer is always no. But if you ask, it might be yes. You don't know. Or at least a guarded yes that leads us towards the better question. Some hope. <laughs> Can I ask how many, we still have 26 people here online. How many of, of the people online are early career faculty? If you could just like kind of use the raise your hand. Um, I just have a quick question. Yes. Um, so how do you define early career? Do you mean the, uh, like, uh, for example, uh, you know, the faculty who graduate from a, a PhD or MD or postdoc or fellowship, no more than five years? I'm going to let Meg answer that one. <laughs> um, it depends a little bit, but mostly early career faculty would be um faculty who are, have not yet been granted tenure? Um, I think it's a, a little bit complicated because- uh, It is. <laughs> <right>. <laughs> um, I'm not really, uh, you know, working in the annual track because I'm at the School of Medicine. There is a health science clinical educator track and that is not really offering any tenure, but uh, as uh, UC Davis uh, Medical Center, where our school of medicine is uh, sort of like an academic institution, any faculty, as far as I know, is encouraged to conduct a research, no matter you're just a clinical track or, you know, a research track. That's where I would, that's where I was mentioning it depends, because if the call is for tenure like, or someone who's doing research and has uh, you know, their own lab space, as I said, um, those are areas in which you would be eligible because as I said, not every institution is straight assistant professor, associate professor, and then professor. So again, it's always better to sort of ask the question depending on sort of where you're at because I do have a lot of medical faculty that are in either the clinical tract or the health education tract that are actually eligible to submit for some of the foundation applications. So it, when it comes to foundations, it just, like I said, it, it really depends, but there, there are, a, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of wiggle room depending on um, which foundation and, and which opportunity. Um, and I would, I would add to that, that on the federal foundation or the um, federal agency side, um, I would encourage you to reach out to someone who is actually on this call, um, Erica Shadan, um, who is in the um, School of Medicine Office of Research and does a lot around um, grant. There she is. Hi, Erica. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you want to chime in on this at all? 
Yeah, so we're um, you know, we're a we're a similar we're a sister unit to the IRS over at um the School of Medicine Office of Research and we will we help all School of Medicine faculty with any type of grant mechanism. Um and if we can't figure it out, we know who to point you to and all the good stuff. So we have we have decades of experience doing this and we can help you out. Don't hesitate to reach out. And our services are free. So there you go. Well, that's you have wonderful. an email address, like a email address that you can put Oh yeah, in the- I'll put my email address in the chat right now. Thanks. Thank you very much. It's a really wonderful uh, presentation from all of you. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Seconded strongly. Yeah, very valuable information. Thank you. Any more questions? We can also take questions from staff. If you're a staff member supporting faculty, please also feel free to use this as a resource. Um, And I also mentioned during my talk that um, I don't specifically, I don't have the bandwidth to support graduate students or undergraduate students, um, but if you are one of those um, identities on this call, or if you have um, students that need to find funding, um, if they're grad students, send them to the Office of Grad Studies. The Office of Grad Studies has a team within it um, that helps graduate students find um, external funding and apply for uh, internally coordinated uh, funding opportunities. And then when it comes to undergraduates, um, there is the Undergraduate Research Center. um, And then uh, some grants that we can point you to, um, like undergraduate research experiences, an NSF program, et cetera, where you can where the faculty member can apply for a grant and then um, use it to um, engage undergraduates in research activities, et cetera. Um, So I just wanted to make sure that got in um, to the talk. Also Pivot has um, funding opportunities for graduate students and undergraduates. All right, I think kind of exhausted questions for now. Um, as, as, I, as I said, we will uh, post a recording and we will share the slides and um, maybe we'll pull out some of the more relevant links so that you can have them in an email. Uh, but if you have any questions about foundation corporate engagement, reach out to Tracy and Jamie, um, sign up for the funding newsletters, uh, take a look at Pivot, And if there's anything else or resources we can connect you with, feel free to reach out to my team at strategic initiatives at davis.edu. Have a great weekend. Happy Friday the 13th. And we'll see you in a few weeks for our next forum. Bye. Thank you, everyone.